Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Something is going on. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving deeper. Light is shining further. Exposing. You know why there's so much chaos? Because light's shining in areas. Darkness doesn't know what to do but fight violently, lie and deceit and so forth, you know. What a time and season we are in. Would you turn to Psalm 71? Psalm 71. Glory. Psalm 71. <laughs> Glory. Everybody there? Let's speak it. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Okay, you can go home now. <laughs> if everybody would just hold on to this for the rest of their life, they'd be fine. <laughs> Let me never be what? Put to shame. Deliver me in your what? Your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Now listen, deliver me in your righteousness. So if you're not in his righteousness, can you be delivered? No. If you're not in the righteousness, you cannot be delivered until you what? Repent. Because the blood always goes before the spirit. Be my what? Strong. Be my, verse 3, be my strong refuge. To which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked. Out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. I have become a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. What a prayer. What a request. That's someone who crossed over. Has everybody got it? Because, see, this is a heart prayer. That's an individual that has crossed over because he wants to maintain that crossover. In Psalm 112. In verse 1. Let's speak it together, please. Praise the Lord. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respects. Who delights greatly in his commandments. His commandments are his words. Everything God speaks is a command. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be what? Blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guard his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is what? Steadfast. 
trusting in the Lord. How many of y'all know God want looking for a steadfast heart? A steadfast heart. That's what we're going to talk about today. What is a steadfast heart? It says his heart is what? Verse 8. Established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his what? Upon his enemies. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a desire that your enemy be destroyed. Amen? In fact, isn't that what God came for? God put on flesh, came in as a human to destroy the works of his enemy, Satan, and his kingdom. And you and I are to be carrying that mission on. Remember, we're called to what? Battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate to the, in the world system and rescue as many souls as possible. That's why you and I live. If we begin to drift from that, we fall out of position. Does everybody get it? Again, there's nothing wrong with having a business. There's nothing wrong with having a family. But never allow that to supersede your call, purpose, and destiny. Once you do, it's out, you're out of position. And the enemy knows because God has established us to be in that position. Because only in that state of position are you protected. When you fall out of either one of these things, the protection of God begins to lift. And that's where the word says, I was afflicted when I went astray. Amen? Is everybody okay? Blessed. What is the word blessed? It means highly favored. Highly favored. Now, how many of you know that the, even the wicked becomes favored by the devil? So never look at an individual's wealth or how much they hold or, or what we call blessings because many people have been blessed by the devil. Amen? You know them by the fruit. And if, there's not, if they're not practicing righteousness, something's not right. Because that's what God looks for. And those who practice righteousness will have a steadfast heart. Amen? So the word blessed means highly favored. <laughs> Why? Because we fear the Lord. That's a reverence, honor, and respect to the Lord. We delight in His ways. We have a steadfast heart. It is a heart that is established, settled, immovable. All trusting in the Lord. All trusting in the Lord. No matter what comes your way. You know, one of the things that people don't realize is that the heart of God has been written in the Bible also. God expresses His heart in the Bible. In His Word. That's why many people don't know the, the, the Lord's heart because they never read the Word. So they assume. They get all their information from fake news and all kinds of other stuff what's going on. Lies and deception. They can never set their heart right. Now, even when we come together, what does the Word say? It says, listen, they came together. They were fed my Word. But it had no effect because they did not receive it in faith. Not receiving. So you can come to Bible studies and everything else, training sessions, but never learn. Never really put it into practice. Because see, if you haven't learned it, you don't put it into practice. Only those who practice what they've learned have accepted and received it. If they're not practicing it and putting it and apply it in their life, then they've just rejected it. And not even realizing that. And they wonder why they fall in circles and fall and do the same stuff over and over. Again, if you're not making that area of attempt to press in, to press in and to cross over every day, that is a decision that God has given me and you the power to choose. He invites us to cross over every day. Knowledge has nothing to do with crossing over. Why well, I learned this today, that doesn't help you cross over. It may encourage you to cross over. Amen? But crossing over is an area that the heart crosses over and touches God's heart. And there's an exchange of heart. 2 Timothy 4. Steadfast heart. And what is your heart? It is the core of all your desires. It is the character of your spirit.
Hallelujah. In verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says, again, we've heard the Scripture multiple times, but He's constantly warning us. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Hallelujah. Now I charge you. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? <laughs> That's good. He says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, in other words, because in, according to the change of their heart. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. For they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry, fulfill your calling, purpose, and destiny. These are individuals that are, were not able to endure. They lack God's presence and truth. They lack the power of Christ because of the lack of crossing over. Again, when you cross over, and you're going to hear this more and more times, that's when the heart changes. Only when you cross over can that heart change. Is everybody okay? Remember, the core of your desires is your heart. And when there's a lack of crossover, people begin to eat deceptive food. Because everybody looks for fulfillment somewhere. You're either hunger, hungry and thirst for righteousness or you're hunger and thirst for yourself. And this food is spiritual corruption. It's deceptive food. It brings contamination and it cuts loose individuals from the bride of Christ. One of the things that happens is now, of course, because they're eating deceptive food, it brings false perceptions, turns away from light and truth, even to hating the voice of righteousness. If you notice right now, some people, you just try to share something, even in calmness or righteousness, man, they just blow up because they are so demonized and violent right now. You know, you're seeing all these riots go on. It's been escalated. You know, even the president knows that these people are being shipped in from other states. That's why he just put executive, he reminded them of executive law saying, anyone who comes to riot from another state will be arrested. You know, they're not stupid, but they do know. The, the problem is, which is so vitally important, that's why everybody needs to get out and vote out. Get out and vote out. These blue politicians that hold seats and positions of authority that are allowing, because they are anti-American, and they are allowing their own cities and, their, and the people's businesses to be destroyed, what happened to protection? None. They lifted it, telling their policemen to step down. Calling in the National Guard, telling them to step down. Those individuals ought to be thrown in jail. They are not protecting American interests, protecting their global antichrist interest. Does everybody get it? That's why we must encourage everyone. Man, if people don't get it now, well, what's going on in all of these states? You see it all over the news. And they're all run by blue politicians, Democratic leftist politicians that are allowing this country to be destroyed. But we need to have a steadfast heart. That's why we need to be armed spiritually. But physically. But be armed spiritually. Amen? 
I don't understand why all of these people aren't. And, and that's why they try to, in certain states and so forth, they come against the Second Amendment because they don't want anybody to be armed. You know why? Because most people be out there protecting their businesses. Hello? They don't have to shoot to kill, but they can shoot to wound. Unless you're going to be killed yourself, then you shoot to kill. Hallelujah. Psalm 119. Praise God. Psalm 119. Glory. Steadfast heart. All trusting. Verse 1. Blessed, of course, what's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Why? Because they've crossed over. Who seek him with all the heart. They do. Also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. They have, you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your requests, commandments, and laws. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies. As much as in all riches... I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. What a commitment. Does everybody see this? What a commitment. Why? Because he crossed over. He made a connection and crossed over. Blessed, highly favored, undefiled of heart. In other words, his desires are pure. They're what? Pure. Proverbs 27. Steadfast heart. In verse 17. You know, during this time, because everything that people see and what's going on in, in the media shows, everything, we have to be careful of our heart. We have to protect our heart. You know, I mean, because there are times and you can get drawn into a, and such an anger and rage that you just want to go out and do something crazy. But there's that fine line where you and I must be careful. There's nothing wrong with holy anger. Amen. Righteous anger. When you get angry, pray. Amen. Lord, I can't kill him, but you can. <laughs> God knows, you know. <laughs> Lord, you gave me your heart. I've exchanged my heart today, man. They're really ticking me off. Please arrest them. Remove them. Get rid of them. They're destroying your children. There's nothing wrong with crying out to God in whatever way you got him. What we want is divine intervention. Amen? Divine intervention to rescue people, turn their hearts. And if their heart is so hardened, get them out of the way. 
Praise God. They, they're better off caged because they're acting like the animals anyways. Hopefully they'll settle down and turn their hearts towards the Lord. Verse 17. Let's speak it. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Whoever keeps the fig will eat its fruit. So he who waits on his master will be honored. As in water, face reflects face. So a man's heart reveals, whoa. in other words, an individual's desires will reveal the individual. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of a man are never what? Satisfied. Wow. Again, man's desire reveal the man. They're never satisfied. Carnal appetites and desires of worldliness. They can never be satisfied. Your satisfaction comes from the presence of God. Your satisfaction comes from knowing that you've obeyed God's voice. Amen. 2 Timothy 2. get there without a steadfast heart. No. So whose responsibility is to protect your heart? Ours. So you got to remember that the enemy will come to, again, breach God's love. He will come to bring offense. He will come to hurt. You know, emotional pain is probably the worst pain that there can be. But if it's emotional pain of sorrow because you did something stupid, that's a good thing. Because it's going to turn to a fruit of righteousness if there's true repentance. Of course, if there's not true repentance, then it isn't going to. In 2 Timothy chapter 2.21, again, therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from his past desires. He will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. There is the simple simplicity of this. If everyone would cleanse himself from yesterday, from whatever offended you yesterday, from unforgiveness, from shame, from anything from your past, there isn't one person in here who's not made a mistake. Probably not one person in here who didn't make a mistake yesterday. Somebody said something, thought something, you know, whatever. Desired something you really, <laughs> that ain't right, you know. Or agreed with something. Because even agreement brings a desire. Everybody has fallen into that at some way or another. But the whole thing is to leave it. Do not bring yesterday into today. Amen? Never. Never bring your past. Never bring your sins from yesterday into the, into, to the, into the present. Never. Why? Because it will open a door. And that door will never shut until you stop bringing them in to the present. That's what's important about, that's what he means, cleanse yourself from your latter. It means cleanse yourself from yesterday. Every desire that you know was displeasing to God, you must not bring into the present. You must leave. Does everybody understand? This is how you maintain a steadfast heart. And your heart is steadfast towards him, not towards the world. You're always walking away from the world. Always. We don't turn to the world. It's like turning to Egypt, he calls it. Going back to the house of bondage again. People are running to the world. I can't believe how many Christians, so-called Christians, but they're really not Christians. They call themselves Christians, but they're not Christians. They run to the world. They want to use God to gain and reject being used by God. But you know what? Nobody gets away with anything. People think they're getting away with something because they're doing something behind closed doors. Nobody gets away with it. Never. 
Hallelujah. All right. Verse 22. He says, flee youthful. In other words, youthful what? Lust. That means your past. But pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Again, I want to go back again. If you're willing to be a vessel used by God, then you must cleanse yourself. That's what the Lord says. Anyone who desires to come after me must deny himself. It's the same thing. But if you're just using God to get something free from something, without wanting to be a vessel of honor, you'll never make it. That's the same thing where the Lord says, you want to get off of drugs and alcohol or you don't want a new life? If you want to get off of drugs and alcohol, you got to have a new life. It isn't going to work any other way. Other than that, you fall into management. So you haven't drank in 40 years, but you're in hell. What the heck good is it? Hallelujah. So he gives us the key. He says, flee also youthful lust. You're back. You're uh, you, lost from your past. But pursue the righteousness. If you're pursuing righteousness, you're practicing righteousness. Faith, love, peace with those who call out on a pure heart. A pure heart. So you want to associate with those who have a pure heart. And don't protect those who have a wicked one. Expose it. Verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. <laughs> But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife and open doors to demonic presence. You just invited them in. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in what? Humility, humble. Correcting those who are what? In opposition according to the ways of God. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. What's he trying to do? That they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil that has been taken. They took them captive to do his will instead of God's will. And we see that happen all the time. We have front row seats of it. <laughs> there's a steadfast process of cleansing from the old life and desires that pervert or defile the heart and the mind that process is consistency we must self-examine we must look to convict ourselves looking for conviction not waiting to get convicted gosh is this right oh man you know already you know, no justification, no reasoning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Steadfast heart of purity and righteousness is a vessel of honor to be used by God, not a vessel that uses God. That's the difference. Psalm 51. Always waiting on the Lord, waiting for his next command. Why? My heart's yours, Lord. What do you want me to do? Psalm 51. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Let's speak it. Verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, in other words, my acts of cooperation with the presence of evil. That's called sin. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. That's the curse that comes. And cleanse me from my sin. You know, people don't realize as parents that have children. 
When you commit these things, that curse goes to your children and you're responsible. Does everybody get it? That curse goes to your children and you're responsible until you repent and get back in position. Then your children have to go through what you did. And we don't want that to happen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, my inherited curses, and cleanse me from my sin, the presence of evil. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, your desire, you desire what? Truth in the inward parts. And where it's the inward part? Your heart. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssops, and, sh and I shall be cleansed. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. If your spirit is steadfast, your heart is steadfast. Do not cast me away from your presence. and Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or I will give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Wow. Cleanse me from sin, transgressions, and iniquities. Create in me a new heart, a pure heart. Revive me, refresh me, reconnect me. And with my spirit, refresh me. Restore, maintain your joy from the eternal presence that I may teach and share you with others. See, when he says a teach, it's like we share him with others. We're sharing. How can you share him with others without his presence? You know, people try to go out and beat people up with the word. But no compassion. No love. That's all they're doing is convicting, judging. Well, this person did this, this, who cares? It doesn't matter. God is looking for his heart to be expressed, not your old man's heart. Amen? Matthew 25. You know, everybody must work out their own salvation. Amen? But it's a lot easier to work it out if you're cross over, if you're connected. <laughs> then you know who works it out for you? The Lord. <laughs> Other than that, you're working it out yourself, and it ain't doing too good. But to work is the word for cooperation. So we cooperate with God who is working out our salvation. Amen? Matthew 25, verse 14. Glory. Let's speak it. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each one according to his own ability. Own what? Ability. And immediately he went on a journey. God knows what you, he's created you to do. Amen? Don't fulfill somebody else's purpose. Amen? Don't try to copy somebody else's purpose. You must fulfill. The only thing we want to copy is God's character. 
In other words, that's where he says, imitate me. But there's still a specific, you have a specific character and personality God has created for a specific area to reach more people like you are. Does everybody get it? In other words, Paul said, I became many things to save many things. So one day he was a biker, one day he was a, you know, whatever, religious, and next day he was whatever. <laughs> He became many things. He was a tent maker. He was in the industries. He was, he, he was on boats, fishermen. He did all kinds of things to rescue as many people as possible. Does everybody get it? So no matter where you are, you can blend right in. You're stealth. You know, you're, you're undercover. You're an undercover ambassador of Christ. Carrying the heart of God with an outstretched hand of his. See, now, you may not like where God places you. And he won't move you until you fulfill what you're supposed to. And if you choose to move yourself, shame on you. <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble. <laughs> Does everybody understand? Why? Because what he does is, remember, when you choose to step out of position, there's no protection. Glory. All right, let's go a little further. In verse 16, Then he who had received the five talents went and traded them and made another five talents, and likewise he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one, he went and what? Dug it in the ground and hid it, his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with him. And so he had, see, he who had uh, five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. Then he said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now, I want you to grab this because there is no joy in the world. Now, there's a song, Joy to the Lord, you know, during Christmas, and so people sing the song. But only in God's presence is there joy. The world does not know joy. They know happiness. They know gladness, but they do not know joy. Joy is different. This joy is from the eternal presence of God, and it is a joy that is within, that just bubbles and overflows because there's a connection with the presence of God. It's a joy that no man can steal. It's a joy that stays there. But I'll tell you what, people exchange joy for worldliness. Verse 22. He also who had two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have, done, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Same thing. Now, again, he had, there was one. This is an example of five talents, two talents, three talents, whatever. It doesn't matter. These were known as abilities. Amen. God will not give you any more than you can handle. The only reason why people can't handle certain things is because they stepped over what they're supposed to be responsible for. They've taken on other responsibilities that they're not supposed to. Amen? Hallelujah. In verse 24, Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you would be a hard man. Well, who told him that, right? Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. Oh, fear will always move you out of position. And went and hid your talents in the ground. What he was not using is the ability God gave him. Look, there you have what yours is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked. He called him wicked. Even though he got back what he gave him, he didn't do anything with it. And this is what we have to ask ourselves. If you have a steadfast heart, you are doing things for God. Not because you have to. 
because you want to share his heart with everyone you come across. But as the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has what? Ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be what? Taken away. And cast an unprofitable servant into outer darkness. What is outer darkness? Hell. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hell. Mm. The enemy of fear will always challenge you. He challenges your steadfast heart. This joy, again, is not happiness. It is the joy of the Lord because of his presence, not because of the world. We serve God not because we have to, not to impress anyone, because we love him. And we are grateful. Grateful. Amen? We're grateful. And if you are, have, if you are grateful, that's an open door to access his presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Do you ever notice that when somebody says thank you, you get their attention? They get your attention? Thank you. My bird says that a lot now. Thank you. Boy, you come to get him out of the cage, he's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. When God comes to rescue us, we're saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. But you should be saying thank you to the day you enter home. Every day should be a start up. thank you. Another day of breath. Praise God. Thank you. Man, thank you for hot water. Thank you for toilets that flush. Amen. Thank you for a bed. Thank you for a roof. Thank you. You know, we take things for granted, and everyone falls into that area, but we got to step back every day. See, because if you cross over, there's always a start of, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's when you remember where you were. Amen? And remember what we should have been judged by already. Because none of us has a right to be here. Only what he's done has given us that right. Amen? Hallelujah. Psalm 16. Glory, glory, and glory. Psalm 16, powerful psalm. We're going to speak this all. Is everybody there? We're going to sow this. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied, who chasten after themselves or other God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance in my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. Please grab hold of this. When your heart is steadfast, God will speak to you even while you sleep. And the next thing you know, you'll have ideas and things that, man, you know what? Now I know what I'm supposed to do. Or an answer from prayer 10 years ago will be answered all of a sudden. Whoa. I have verse 8. Um, I will bless. Wait a minute. Yeah. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I will set the Lord always before me. Oh, goodness. If everybody did that every day, there would be no problem. Because he is at my right hand, I will what? 
not be moved. So if you set the Lord before you every day, are you going to be moved? No. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Steadfast heart. Hmm. A heart that's dutifully firm. Unwavering. A heart that is loyal. It is faithful. It is dutifully firm. Unwavering, loyal, faithful, committed. Steadfast heart is devoted. It's dedicated. Dutifully firm, unwavering, loyal, faithful, committed, devoted, dedicated, dependable, and accountable. Dutifully firm, unwavering, loyal, faithful, committed, devoted, dedicated, dependable, and accountable. That is a steadfast heart. Everybody there? Let's speak verse 1. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in this holy place? Now, this is powerful because he says, who may have access? Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you have access. If the heart ain't right, you ain't got access. says, who may ascend? Who may have access? He who has a what? Clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, which could be yourself, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. In other words, you want access to God all the time? You must have a steadfast heart. Amen. Colossians 1. Verse 19. Colossians 1, verse 19. Let's speak it. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him whether things on earth or things in heaven. Having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind or your thoughts. By wicked works yet now he has reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If, indeed, this plagues, every time you see if, it's cooperation. You continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister." If you continue, maintain a steadfast, cleansed heart of desire and mind. See, so said you maintain this hope. One of the things that the word talks about is hope. Hope is future faith. Amen? It's always associated with future faith. And when the word talks about hope deferred, it means it's been misled, cut off. The enemy comes with fear and discouragement all the time to try and nullify 
anything that God's trying to do. In Proverbs 13, see, you battle discouragement every day. But recognizing that these battles are there, that this influence is there, is vitally important. But you won't have that discernment to recognize these things without God's presence. Proverbs 13, verse 11. Oh, let's start at 10. Hmm. Let's speak it. By pride comes nothing but strife, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. Hope deferred makes the heart, what? Sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. And what does he talk about? What desire? God's desire. See, the enemy's always trying to exchange God's desire for his desire in you. Why? Because he's trying to get us to drift away. He who despises the word will be what? Destroyed. But he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Yes. Second Peter chapter 3. You know, we, in the carnal state of being, there's that battle of want. That desire is known as want. And when we agree with that battle of want, it affects the heart because the heart is the core of all desire. So our desires are, are, that are from God, that have been placed in God, listen, we fight to get God's desires in us. But yet so many times easily we exchange them for the world because the heart is not steadfast. It's not, or there's not a reality of protecting your heart. Even in, in, in anything, you know, I mean, when we we're carnally appetited, <laughs> everything we saw, I want. A child, that's all, it, their middle name is want. You know, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. No matter where you go, what store, no matter what it is, they always want. They want this, they want that. And they don't understand that uh, it's not helpful to them. They want to eat every kind of candy that there is, and they, you know, it brings diabetes later or can drive them, drives the parents crazy, you know. But and anyways, there are things that are healthy and unhealthy. But so many times we've had appetites and desires that were unhealthy spiritually and physically. Amen? So in this, we have to be careful that we don't allow the enemy to exchange those things that are righteous for wicked, that are displeasing to God. So we must protect our heart. And the word says a joyful heart is good medicine. So think about that, a joyful heart. So the enemy's trying to exchange. That's where that battle is all the time. It's a battle over desire. It's a battle over want because a, a want is a desire. Did you ever buy anything that you shouldn't have? I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand because if you didn't, you'd be lying. Everyone has bought something they realize, like, man, I shouldn't have bought that. And I could have used that money for something else. Gosh, why didn't I ask the Lord about this? Or you did, but he didn't answer you yet. Well, I guess it must be yes. No, if he didn't answer you, it's no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Unless you can't hear him. Second Peter 3, verse 10. But the day to live in the night in which the heavens will pass away with great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So don't put your hope in the world. It's cooking. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? 
looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will dissolve, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens. That's hope future, isn't it? Faith future, hope. According to his promise, looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness will what? Righteousness will dwell, not wickedness. There will be none. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. As also our brother, beloved Paul, according to the wisdom given him, has written to you. Has also in these, his epistles, speaking in these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you fall also fall from your own steadfastness or steadfast heart, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and the plan of God and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to him be glory in both now and forever. In Ezekiel 36, Steadfast heart. You know, when you stand on the truth and you are a protector of your heart and the desires that God has given you, these truths of desire that you stand on, you'll be tried on. The enemy knows. He knows. He'll try to push that button to release that. He wants to exchange everything that of a godly desire in you for an exchange for a corruptible seed or ungodly desire. Because he knows. And people are walking around and have a hook in their heart that are walking, claiming to be Christians, and they've been doing it for 10 and 15 years, you have no idea they're not getting into heaven. Because there's open doors, and they're still practicing the things that displease God. Amen? If they're not practicing righteousness, they're practicing wickedness. One or the other. In Ezekiel 33, or 36, I'm sorry, in verse 16. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel, which means us, dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways and deeds to me. Their way was like the uncleanness of a woman in their cu customary... Wait a minute. Ezekiel 36. Yeah. In their customary impurity. Therefore, I poured out my fury on them, for the blood they had shed on the land, and for their idols which they had defiled. Is there blood being shed on the land? Yeah. So I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the countries. I judged them according to their ways and their deeds. When they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet they have done <laughs> gone out of his hand, out of his land. So in other words, these are supposed to be Christians, but they still profane the name of the Lord. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations, wherever they went. Listen, God's name is being profaned in the Democratic Party. I'm going to tell you that right now. And many of these parties proclaiming they, they pray. I'm going to tell you that God don't hear their prayer at all. Unless the only thing he's waiting to hear is their repentance. Because they are evil and wicked and promoters of much bloodshed. Verse 22. Therefore say to the house of the Israel, thus says the Lord God, I will do this for not I will not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. I will sanctify my great name which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations will know that I am the Lord. 
says the Lord God, when I am hallowed or reverenced, honored, and respected, which is called the fear of the Lord, and you before them, before their eyes. So they will see a change. You'll be a sign and wonder to someone because you are no longer that same person that was. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own heart and your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my commandments and do them. I will give you my Holy Spirit. He will cause you. He will convict you. He will chasten you. He will guide you to do the things that are right if you're listening, if you're in relationship, if your desire is to have a pure heart, if you have a steadfast heart. Amen? Go to Hosea 4. And then one more scripture. Hosea 4. In verse 6. Hosea 4, 6. Everybody okay? Steadfast heart. Glory. Let's speak it together. My people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. God's knowledge. Now, knowledge that is not understood is not truth. Somebody get it? So this knowledge must be understood, which becomes truth. Because you have rejected my knowledge, I will reject you from being a priest for me. That's someone close to the Lord. And because you have forgotten the law, the word, for the ways of your God, I will forget your what? Your children, right? Because a curse came down the family line. It says that the more they increase, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. It shall be like people, like priests, so I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. For they shall eat, but not have enough. They shall commit harlotry, but not increase. Because they have ceased obeying the Lord. Wow. Harlotry, wine, and new wine enslave the heart. My people ask counsel from their wooden idols. And their staff informs them. For the spirit of harlotry has caused them to stray. And they have played the harlot against their God. They offer sacrifices on mountaintops and burn incense on hills, under oaks, poplars, and uh, terebinths, because their shade is good. Their daughter, therefore your daughters commit harlotry, and your brides commit adultery. I will not under, not punish your daughters when they commit harlotry, nor your brides when they commit adultery. For the men themselves go apart with harlots and offer sacrifices with a ritual harlot. Therefore, people do not understand will be trampled. They will be what? Trampled. See, this is what's happening right now. It's happening all over. I'm going to close at 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy three and verse ten. Second Timothy three ten. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch and Icium and Lystra. What persecution, persecutions I endured, 
men out of them all the Lord delivered me because God's always, he will always make a way of escape for a steadfast heart. Remember, in this as a steadfast heart, that means you are blessed. Blessed means you are favored. Amen? Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Is that happening now? Yeah, man. Turn on the news. But you must continue. Everyone say continue. In the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for the doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be completely, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It will take a steadfast heart. That's what God looks for. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you protect and seal our hearts in this word that's been imparted today, that we will constantly self-examine ourselves, searching the cores of our desire in our heart, that they be well-pleasing to you. In Jesus.